What's up, everyone? Vu of Envu Films, and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. And today's video is idiotic is because I'm about to tell you to break the rules, okay? And particularly the 180 degree shutter rule that everyone tells you to do when you first start to do your videography, your filmmaking, what have you. Rules are meant to be broken. All because you're Vietnamese, it does not mean you have to become a manicurist. You could cut hair or something. You know what I mean? Do something else. If you're Filipino, you don't have to become a nurse. You could become something else, a boxer or just, or whatever it is that you want to be. You know, you could cook roasted pork for the rest of your life. If, if the speed limit is 50 miles an hour, you don't have to go 50 miles an hour. You could probably go 61 miles an hour 11 miles over the speed limit and the cop won't pull you over unless you have a Honda Civic with a massive fart can muffler looking like Johnny Chan from Fast and Furious, then yes, you might get pulled over. Too soon, Junior. But with that being said, I'm here to tell you to break the filmmaking rule of the 180 degree shutter. And if you do not know what that is, that is literally just doubling your shutter speed based on the frame rate you are shooting, which means if you're shooting 24 frames per second, as I am right now, your shutter speed should be one over 50th of a second shutter. If you're shooting 60 frames per second slow motion or what have you, then yes, you need to double that to one over 120 or one over 125, depending on the camera you have. If you're shooting 120 frames per second, it should be doubled to one over 240 or whatever your camera provides you with and so on and so forth. The reason why you wanna maintain a 180 degree shutter is because of this beautiful motion blur as you can see from my hands. But even in a video like this, I am usually not moving much, so if I were to break that 180 degree shutter rule right now, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell. Let me show you. So I just, my light, my key light was 18%, now I increase it to 50%, and I increase my shutter speed to like one over 125 or so, and can you really tell? There might be a little bit of difference in, in you know, the motion blur of my fingers, but generally speaking, I usually just sit here and talk like this, the only thing that moves is my lips probably my mouth, and if I blink, it's probably not much because I'm Asian and we don't have much to blink, so you probably can't tell. But as I'm saying, in a situation like this, it doesn't really matter if you're shooting 180 degree shutter or you could freaking you could shoot one over 4,000 shutter, one over 8,000 shutter. Most people will not notice that you are cranking the shutter to get the correct exposure. And the reason why you would wanna even crank shutter to begin with is if you're trying to get like depth of field, right? Right now I'm shooting f1.4 on a 24 millimeter GM lens on a7 III. If I wanna keep this nice bulkalicious background or if as Canon's con conspiracies would say, Tone, then yes, I want to crank shutter speed if I don't wanna have to use an ND filter, okay? I'm gonna just switch this lighting back because it's like burning my face. Okay, so now we're back with you know standard lighting and of course 180 degree rule shutter. The only main reason why you would want to even like break the 180 degree rule is if for some reason you don't have an ND filter and you want to maintain shallow depth of field, you want to shoot wide open, then without ND filter and if it's like bright as crap outside or if you know for some reason lighting situation calls for it, you're gonna have to crank your shutter. And I'm gonna tell you that it is okay some of the times to crank that shutter speed. Again, if you wanna be proper about it, you could always stop down to like, I don't know, F5, F6, F4, whatever it is required for you to get proper exposure without cranking shutter and maintaining the proper shutter speed and proper motion blur, what have you. But if you really want to get that nice bokeh, uh, you know, depending on what you're shooting, then you could crank the shutter speed without issue so long as there is minimal movement in your shot, that is, one, so if you're just doing an interview, someone's sitting here like this and you're doing outside and for some reason the sun is really bright that day and the only way you could get proper exposure with a wide open aperture or like F1.8, F2.8, you need to use ND filter. Let's say you have a Peter McKinnon ND filter. It is expensive as crap. It is $250. You didn't want to buy the, you just bought the standard one. It only has five stops of ND versus the nine stops of ND and you don't have you don't even have enough you don't have enough ND strength to cancel out that bright ass sunlight crank your shutter no one will notice especially if the person's just standing there let's say you're shooting a wedding things are hectic 
and you know, you're shooting the portrait shot for the bride and groom and the sun is really bright. You don't have 18 ND filters for the 18 cameras you have lined up. Crank your shutter because the bride and groom are probably standing here like this, reading their vows. There's not much movement for anyone to notice any type of motion blur in your shot. Another situation, when you're doing event coverage, wedding filmmaking, and you know, people are running around, the bride and groom are about to have their portraits, things are hectic. You have this one lens, 85 millimeter Sigma, and you want to switch to something wider, and then you put that on, then it's like, oh crap, you know, you had an ND filter on this, it doesn't fit on your wider prime lens. Oh no, what are you going to do? Who cares? Just crank your shutter because if you know that you're going to shoot slow motion, 4K60 with the Sony A7S III, that's what I've been waiting for, we want that 4K60. If you know you're going to use slow motion in the shot, that whole like motion blur doesn't even matter anymore because once you slow down a shot, you're not going to notice any motion blur or like any lack of motion blur in that shot. And it's gonna look completely fine as I am showing you right now. All these shots here were shot with a cranked shutter of anywhere between one over 1,000 or what have you, or one over 2,000, one over 3,000, and it's slowed down. Can you tell that I cranked the shutter? I don't know. Let me know if it looks funny to you. When you're doing run and gun shooting, whatever helps you get the job done, whatever helps you get the shot as it happens instead of like something's happening oh crap your nd filter is not right oh crap this is not the right lens for you, you got to switch all this stuff it's much better if you could just point shoot do a quick adjustment of the shutter get the shot and you have it and no one could tell if you crank the shutter or not so i'm telling you right now rules are meant to be broken you don't always have to follow them obviously if you're in like a really controlled environment you're doing a studio shoot you are doing a commercial shoot, corporate shoot, whatever it is, and you have all your gear with you, yes, I just recommend you go ahead and shoot at the 180 degree rule, double your, your shutter speed should double your frame rates. The only the one thing I will tell you never to do is to shoot at a slower shutter speed. So if you're shooting 24p, don't go under one over 50. Don't go on, don't go one over 40, one over 30. And same thing goes with, um, you know, if you're shooting 60 frames a second, never go under 100, uh, one over 120 shutter speed, because that will, will have a problem. You know, that's when you have too much motion blur. And then you see in the footage that like things just kind of looks really choppy to me in most situations that does not have a lot of motion. It is definitely okay to go over double your shutter speed, but never go under. So this situation wouldn't be a problem if you didn't want to shoot wide open. You know what I mean? If you, if you didn't care about like the bokeh blur or like, you know, that subject isolation, you could just stop down. F4, F5.6, get the right, get the right uh, shutter speed and the correct motion blur for your, for your shot. But if the shot doesn't have motion blur and you really just want like that nice, juicy, blurry background, shoot open shutter. No, I mean, shoot wide open, shoot fast aperture, 1.8, 2.8, get that nice blur background and just crank your shutter to match, to get correct exposure. Don't worry about like having to like use the ND filter all the dang time, because if there is no motion, if it's, if, if there's minimal motion in the shot, and if you plan on using slow motion, I don't think having the 180 degree shutter is going to matter that much for your overall footage. Do what is best for you. Do what is necessary to get the shot as it happens in these run and gun situations, in situations that call for it. Use your judgment. It is okay to break the 180 degree rule by speeding up your shutter. Never slow it down, but it's okay to speed it up in the situations that I had spoke about. And I hope the footage that I provided kind of proves that it is okay. So. Till next time, guys, if you appreciated this video, please give it a like and subscribe. If you didn't, you just have really poor taste in YouTube content. I am just kidding. I understand I'm a YouTube douchebag trash. But anyways, guys, till next time, lightning.